So, I'm back. I think this is the seventh time I've started this. The daylight has dwindled. Um, yeah, I like to ramble. I think you know this already. I'm going to do this one more time, but this is going to be my combination video of uh, my library haul, my nonfiction November possibilities, not necessarily plans, just possibilities, and what I am currently reading. Um, now, my library did close down again because I am in Tennessee and being from the South, masks are an infringement on people's rights, apparently. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that. But my state and county are hotspots, so therefore they decided to close again for the second time this year. And I went ahead and picked up a book that they emailed me that came off of hold and then went ahead and put some others, seven others, in to pick up at the same time. The library lady told me, whoa, when I gave her my <laughs> library card. Um, actually, she said, wow. But I just ran in and out, quickest library trip I've ever had. Um, it was raining, so I did not want to feel like being that awful person that was like, bring them to my trunk in the rain. No. I was off of work. I didn't have to worry about messing this up. So I just went yesterday, grabbed them, came home. Um, but I will start with the one that came in from the Interloan Library. I think I put it on request two or three weeks ago. It didn't take too long. I'm trash for anything like political gossip, tabloid gossip, gossip, celebrity gossip. I read trash too. I'm not ashamed of it. But we have Disloyal, the true story of the former personal attorney to President Donald J. Trump by Michael Cohen. I read the uh, prologue, preface. Yeah, it's not surprising. So this will uh, probably be gobbled up this weekend. Um, and speaking of trash, I do have like all my ebook loans decided to come in at the same time too. So I have um, the Mariah Carey that just came out. I have that one. The ebook. I don't know that there's an audio book of it yet. And then I am halfway through Julie Andrews' second book. I haven't read the first one, but I got the second one because it was audio. So hope to finish that Saturday. And I think those are the only non-fictions that came in to talk about. But the next one that we have will be a definite read uh, is What It's Like to Go to War by Carl Marlantes. Marlantes? I never know how to say his name. Um, he also wrote Matterhorn, which is a fiction about the Vietnam War. It's a big chub. I found it, I think, for like 2 or $3. A huge hardback. Um... He was 23 when he was drafted or enlisted in Vietnam. Um, I know they interviewed him on several, several episodes, um, if not all of the episodes of Ken Burden's Vietnam. If you've not watched it, it'll take you a big chunk of time, but it's worth it. Uh, so I'll be interested in um, hearing more from him. And then I have Parkland by Dave Cullen. I borrowed this when it came out and never got to it. I don't know if I just wasn't in the right mindset, but I read Columbine years ago when it came out and then really enjoyed it. So I'm hoping that this one will be just as good. Then we have Braiding Sweetgrass, uh, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Okay, I put this on hold, like I swear in... February or March, if not sooner than that, as the ebook. There's one copy and a bunch of people waiting for it. So I was like, oh well, don't remember how I found out about it. Um, never came in, never came in. And then all of a sudden I see it popping up everywhere on YouTube. I'm thinking, I had never heard of this book, never seen it anywhere. So what happened? Like, where did it come from? So I thought, well, since it's never going to come in off a hold, let me see if they have a physical copy at the library. And sure enough, so we have that one. Then we have The Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom. This one um, I checked out two months ago um, and never got around to it. I've been in a major slump. 
so I just didn't pick it up. Um, and then Olive, uh, who's hosting over at a book, Olive Hosting Nonfiction November, picked this as a group read. So if you want to pick it up, you can read along. Uh, so I was like, hey, I'll check it out again since it's in. So I have this, and it's also on Scribd. If you um, use Scribd, interested in Scribd, it's on there. And then we have, those are the only non-fictions from the library. Three of them are fiction. So we have Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. I feel like everybody knows about this. It was like everybody was reading it a couple months ago. I'm late to the game, so we're going to try that. Uh, Well-Behaved Woman by Therese Ann Fowler. I've had this one on my wish list forever. Um, it's a kind of rags to riches story. A uh, woman after the Civil War, she and her sister are dirt poor, and she meets a Vanderbilt and gets married and goes from like this nothing life to a life of luxury. So, can't wait for that one. And then the last one, again, everybody and their dog has seen this one, The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. I know it has mixed reviews. Uh, it starts... <sighs> The turn of the Great War and then ends post World War Two. I can't remember if it's too. Um, yeah, it's dual, dual timelines, dual characters, obviously. So, I'll try that if I don't like it. If I'm one of the ones that doesn't care for it, I didn't pay anything for it, so it's good. Um, and then I will quickly go over my possibilities that I pulled from my. Um, book cart that you're propped on. Do you love this? My sister made it for me for Christmas last year and I use it all the time. She said she got this cup from a student and she didn't want it so she made a, a vinyl for me. Um, I only picked off of the top shelf of my book cart because those are the ones that I moved up uh, not too long ago as I want to read these now. The other two, two shelves are, I'll get two of them eventually, but they're not like, I'm not chomping at the bit. I have so many books that it's hard to be like that with everything. Um, and if I don't read them, they'll just stay on the cart. <laughs> but we have From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Doty. She wrote Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, um, which I read several, several years ago. This one again is on Scribd. I'm not sponsored by them. That would be a dream, but I'm not sponsored by Scribd in any way. But they do have a 30-day free trial, so if you want to try them out, they have audiobooks as well. Um, this one is just um, basically just uh, funerary history, and it's not very long. It's like 240 pages. So that one I feel like I will get to. And then we have, very apropos... Very apropos, <laughs> speaking of what I spoke about earlier, we have The Viral Storm, The Dawn of a New Pandemic Age, Nathan Wolf. I bought this, like, I can't say very long before all, all this stuff went down. Oh, and I have a very old bookmark, very, very old, stuck in there. This one came out... Two thousand and eleven. Oh Nathan, if I could time travel and tell you. <sighs> okay, and then we have uh, love stories of World War Two by Larry King. I bought this several several years ago, and it came out in two thousand and one. I can't believe it's that old. Doesn't seem like it, but that one that had a mountain view nursery landscaping it's not mine and then we have uh hattie mcdaniel black ambition white hollywood by jill watts this one i can't wait i have another one by a different author um i'm not sure where it is it may be in my spare room um, I need to dig it out because I feel like I should do both at the same time or at least both close together. And then that way I can see 
maybe what if someone missed something we'll see and then we have uh, this one I have had forever I mean it's 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 it's, it's old uh, 2006 for Lacey a mother's story of love loss and justice Sharon Rocha Rocha Miss Rocha um, I feel like everybody knows the Lacey Peterson story and her shit husband. Um, I did read Amber Fry's one years ago and then there was a, like a, one of those, is a Berkeley true crime, put out a little short paperback that I read, so... There's that. Uh, Eleanor and Hick, The Love Affair That Shaped First Lady by Susan Quinn. I read a, non, uh, I read a fiction um, by Amy Bloom of the two of them, and it was horrible. It was awful. Terrible. Do not recommend. Like, don't do it. Ugh. So I'm, I'm very hopeful for this one being that it's nonfiction. So, I was actually glad to find this very recently. Well, like recently before the pandemic. So, pre-February. Pre-March. And then the last one is Generation X by Jen Lancaster. This is the very... I say that. Mm. I was going to say it's the very last nonfiction I have of hers. But no, she had... Uh, it's the United States of Anxiety that came out last month. And I had it on pre-order. And then... They sent me an email that, look, this book is a uh, Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Fr Prime, it's free. And I went, um, cancel pre-order free. I did that. So, I have been hoarding this one like a fat rat because I didn't want to be done with all of her books. So, I think I can safely go ahead and, and read it. And then... I'm trying to think of what I'm reading that's not a physical book that I can tell you without my phone. Um, I'll go through this stack and then we'll then we'll talk. Then we'll talk. So this is what I'm currently reading. I'm reading 13 books. One, two, three, four, five. So this is six of the 13. I mentioned the Julie Andrews, the Mariah Carey. Uh, there's Clown in a Cornfield, which is a young adult horror. I'm listening to the audiobook on that, so that's three. Okay, we're missing four. Um, insert Jeopardy music here. I'll think of them. If I don't think of them, I don't think that anybody will be mad at me. Um, we have... The Gap into Vision, Forbidden Knowledge. This is book two of a five book series. I know I showed this on my last book haul. Uh, it is sci-fi. I had no expectations. The first one I read going, I mean, it came out in 1991 before the invent of trigger warnings, but that thing was like it needed a bow, wrap, gift bag, tissue paper, all of the accoutrement for trigger warnings. I'm like, damn, that was unnecessary. But nonetheless, uh, it ended kind of on a cliffhanger to where you had to pick up the next book. So I finished the first one last night so I can immediately go on to the second one. This one I am like just 10 pages in. I just started it, but it's The Interpreter by Robert Moss. Uh, this one I had again on my last book haul. It's... Um, is a German colonist from New York moving to Pennsylvania. Um, and the main character story intertwines with a Mohawk warrior and a shaman island woman. Uh, so it starts out in England with a German immigrant and he's the one that will move the German immigrant to America and then progress. Then we have A Gracious Plenty by Sherry Reynolds. This one I have had forever and ever. I got it in the bargain section of the used bookstore. This one came out like 20 years ago, I'm sure, if not longer. 97. And I am about 36 pages in. 
Um, then this one is Lucky Us by Amy Bloom. I picked it up just and randomly started reading it because that is the kind of reader I am. Nine times out of ten, I'm just going to randomly pick up a book and start reading it. I try not to think too much about it. And I'm in it and I'm thinking the the writing style seems familiar. You remember what I just said? Do you remember what I just said? About that fictionalized one of this. Same author. Um, it's not rubbing me the wrong way like um, White Houses did. But this has awful reviews. Not all... Okay, I can't say awful. It's not the worst that I have ever seen. Um, but it's like 3.2, 3.3 average stars. So, it's short. So, if I end up hating it, I haven't spent way too much time on it. I feel like I'm going to give it probably just the middle of the line three. So, and then these last two that I know of and can't think of the other four. Um... Again, I, you have seen, you have seen. I'm not far along in either one of them, but American, the A word. Um, finding the country's best real food from cheese to chocolate. So this one, not very thick. And then a square meal of culinary history of the Great Depression. So, I don't think that I've ever been reading 13 books at once. I mean, I can I can show you this one. It's on the top shelf. I don't know why I didn't grab it because it was the last nonfiction up there. Um, we'll do it. The Wild Swans, Three Daughters of China. This one was in my uh, Asian read thought, which I kind of feel a little ashamed about that, but I don't. But at least I know that they're all there waiting for the next one. So I should start incorporating like two per month to wheedle that stack down. Um, but that's, that's all. I say that's all. I know I've probably got other books on hold from the library that will come in. I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done next month because work is going to be cuckoo bonkers bananas like somebody strap me down and take me to the the loony bin and the crazy wagon uh, somebody somebody's gonna have to call jesus for me somebody's gonna have to call jesus or put in a line with them if you if you you know talk to jesus um there's just this one something that i'm i'm not looking forward to and i'm secretly hoping that I won't have to. So, um, let's just not. Oh, one more. I can't believe I forgot this one. I had it on my mind. Life Among the Savages by Shirley Jackson. If I sit here, I'm going to keep adding to the pile, and this video is going to be like 30, 40, 50, 9,000 minutes long. So, I'm done. Uh, if you've read any of these, let me know what what I should absolutely definitely pick to read for nonfiction November, um, what you plan on reading for nonfiction November, if you're participating, if you're not, what you're reading in November. But we're almost at 20 minutes, so I'm going to cut this off and go and sit down with my tawdry Michael Cohen book um, and my sippy cup and my chocolate bar. If you've never had the Aldi chocolate, get it. It's decent. Okay, I'm done. Bye.